Hey guys, look at this. Jason Nix. The reason I play drums. This guy, right here. <laughs> what are <Dude>. you doing? <laughs> Jason Nix is on good company. Do I not get to say anything? Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just, oh, that's good, dude. That's probably gonna be the one. <laughs> hey guys, Scott Bowling. Jason Nix. Good company. That was weird. <laughs> hey guys, my name is Scott Bowling, and you're watching Good Company. Today we have a. Today we're back. We're back from COVID. Last time we were all here, it was in February. Anyway, we have a very special episode. Today we have my man, Jason Nix. This guy taught me to play drums. He used to keep his drum set at my house. I used to look at it and just, it was just crazy, man. I, I, I love this guy. We've been in bands growing up. Uh, I played bass for him, for this guy, and now he's here. And dude, thank you for being here. Let's just, bam. Thanks, look at, man. Look how far apart we are, man. <laughs> it's kind of weird, doing this social COVID. distancing, whatever, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hey man, uh, thank you for being on the show, dude. Yeah, dude. Thank you uh, for having me. Man. It was crazy when you asked me. I was like, "You really want me to do the show with you? You've had all these like amazing, like musicians from around the country." It's like, yeah, man. I'm normally not into this thing, but yeah, dude. Just thank, thank you. you man. Yeah, you're telling me that you're like you don't do a lot of interviews and stuff, and that means a lot to me that you're here. You've always been kind of like an older brother to me, you know. I remember uh, when I met you, I was. 16 or 17 years old so you're you're like older and cooler and you would uh i remember when you turned 16 your oh, dude. your um your parents got you that eclipse the yes. black eclipse yes dude <laughs> and look it wasn't even like it was like if you want the window down you gotta <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> man, dude, yeah, it was awesome dude <laughs> and so it looked nice on the outside but it didn't have all the bells and whistles that's funny dude um so anyway yeah we were in bands growing up but bef i want to talk about all that but before that I want to talk about what got you into, I want to go all the way back to you playing drums. Um, was your family like into music or anything? Or like, how did you get? My aunt was amazing vocalist and pianist in church. Um, basically like, I was going into middle school, was it sixth grade? And I was like, you know, I, I want to be in the band. I want to be in the school band, that nerd, you know, kind of thing. And um, I wanted to play saxophone. So I go into the room and they're like, okay, we're doing an audition, you know, here's the sax, make a noise. I'm like, I can't, ma I can't get this thing, I can't make it, make a noise out of it. So I was like, okay, what else you wanna play? I was like, um, drums, I guess. So he gave me some sticks and like, I'm little like steel, whatever snare. And he's like, okay, do these quarter notes, da, 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 da. So I did it, it was like pretty perfect, you know? So I was like, okay, you're gonna be the drummer. So <laughs> wow. I was like, all right, I guess. <laughs> So um, that's kind of the saxophone. That's kind of funny, man. That like, was what I wanted to play, you know. Like, really? When I started playing, that's a music. hard instrument to practice, dude. Yeah, Did you take it, it home? <laughs> uh, no, I mean I'm just sitting there in the room and I'm trying to make a noise. It was like fold your lip, and I was like, I, I can't do yeah, it. Yeah, I've tried you that know? before. It never it's works. It's like so, I, you know. Fortunately, I, I started out, you know, kind of classically trained. You know, mm -hmm. I really got into like really studying drums. You know, like learning my rudiments, learning how to read, appreciating the art side of it, you know? What, you did this at school? Did yeah, you, yeah. They, provide, they school. could do that? Wow, that's, that's yeah. really cool, man. Um, it, so that's kind of how it so started. So you didn't even need like a, a drum teacher. I mean, this is, that's, that's cool that the school <laughs> no, provided I mean, the, all that. The school music teacher taught me how to play. Fortunately, he was a drummer himself, mm -hmm. so it was kind of helpful. It wasn't just like the band director is like, a saxophone player, a trumpet player, whatever. He yeah. was actually a drummer. So, you know, he, he kind of, he helped me a lot. Did he play? Like, do you ever just watch him on a kit? Like, no, him? he never really played. You know, he would, he would spend special time with me, you know, like to really show me like how to hold the six, how to, you know, do this and that, you know, and then going into the seventh grade, my parents bought me a drum kit. Yeah. You know, and it's so funny, you know, like <laughs> they set it up on the wrong side, you know, so I'm like, like right handed. So like Christmas morning, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, what the hell, you know? You so didn't for know? six months, I'm just like this. I'm like, this feels so weird. So finally, I figured it out. And I switched back. I was like, okay, this is. I wonder. This is it. <laughs> That's hilarious, dude. <laughs> hey, I don't know if you guys can see this poster though. This is us 
Back in the day, that's me trying to be all hard. And this is Jason back here. Everybody was cool, man. I was like the little kid, man. But anyway, I, I love this this uh, this photo shoot of us. I, I know that's random. Like, what are we wearing? Yeah. <laughs> We're trying to look good. It's probably summertime, and I'm wearing a hoodie. Just yeah. like oh. I think it actually was. It probably was. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's cool. I have I have a, a couple of kids, and you got a kid now too. Yeah. And I try to get my kids on the drums so much, and I don't want to push it on them. And so they. They're kind of kind of used to it, so I'm like, "You want to play drums? No, I'm, I'm I want to go on the iPad and stuff." So, but it's cool. Back in the day, you didn't have all those distractions, right? So it's yeah. just did when you what kind of drums did you buy when when, when your parents buy you? I mean, I, they bought me. It was like what it, what was it? An MX one thousand. <laughs> was that like you know, Sears like, or something? I'm not, I, I, no, they bought it. At, <laughs> I think like Aaron or Ted sold. Oh really? Yeah. I mean, it was, yeah, a, it was decent, like it a Pearl. Pearl was popular back then. Everybody had a Pearl kit. Yeah. But, yeah. You know, I mean, they didn't want to spend a lot of money on something that I may not get into. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it was like a black MX one thousand. <laughs> yeah, that's and, awesome. And, and so when you set it up, did you took you still took lessons at school, or did you take? No, I was in the actual like band, the marching band. Um, oh, I see. Going into high school, um, they needed generally you don't march until you get to like eleventh grade or something like that. Mm -hmm. But I was like in the ninth grade or. I was eighth grade and I needed a snare, so I auditioned to be in the drum line. I was like, okay, you're playing snare. So, and then during that whole high school period, I kind of did symphonic band, orchestra. Um, that was kind of my thing, you know? And then I would go home and I would play to like freaking Pearl Jam, you know, Guns N' Roses. So I was like 92, whole 93? Yeah, this was, was like, like probably beginning 93. Of Pearl Jam. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I would sit and play the whole like Nevermind album, you know, in my room and just learn everything. Learn all like, Pearl Jam, Guns N' Roses, Garth Brooks. Oh yeah. You know, I mean, I would sit and literally like study and play the whole album, and then I would. That was kind of like the part-time kind of thing, but mm -hmm. I, my mind and my heart was like marching. Really. <clears throat> I mean, that's what I wanted to do, and then eventually I did like indoor drum line, DCI. Um, that's kind of where my heart was. Yeah. You know, I didn't think about playing. I wish I did that too. I wish I didn't like marching. That's so cool, man. I love all like the tricks and stuff you guys do. It's uh, it's awesome, man. So you, so that was in high school. Did you were you in bands in high school? Not really. I mean, just sitting at home playing the records, albums. You know, like I did that, mm -hmm. but I really wasn't in a band until with, with DCI. You age out at the age of twenty one. Yeah. So basically, you can't you can't march anymore. But no, this is out of high school, and I think that's when I met Greg Parsons. Yeah, dude. And that's, he's like, that's hey, dude, guy. you want to be in a band? I'm like, sure. You know, and like at the time, my chops were just like crazy because I just came off a of DCI, you know. Yeah. And I would, I had a tendency to overplay because I, I still didn't know how to be in a band and mm -hmm. just keep a rhythm. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that was learning it all over again. Yeah. Like how to play. Did you have somebody that played drums that you looked up to? Like, was it, you have a buddy that played drums or was it just your, you know, high school? Taurus Allen, our high school, like actual drum line director, mm -hmm. was a major influence. Um, I listened to a lot of Stuart Copeland. Like I really That's so did cool, man. Band. You did all this on your own. It's kind of like, like you had influences. You listened to it on headphones and Chad Smith, um, huge influence. Uh, mm -hmm. Dave Eberzizi, Sean Kenny. Um, yeah. Um, and then uh, I love Incubus. I got really into listen to like was it Jose Pacella? Yeah. Yeah, dude. I really dude, did. I remember. Um, so like I met you when you when you met Greg Parsons, and uh, I met you around that time. I don't know. And, and just listening to you, I was just, it was insane. I was like, most people when they start a band and they have their first drummer, it's like, their drummer kind of, everybody sucks a little bit, you know what I mean? But having you, it was just phenomenal, man. It was, it, and I remember like you're talking about Alice in Chains and I remember when you did uh, No Excuses or one of those songs, man, you had this fill and it was just like dead on, man. It was just perfect, it was it just natural. So this is 20, Five years ago, where you were just, you know, I remember when we did eventually kind of skipping forward, me and you did a demo. I remember where it was. It was probably somebody's basement or something. And uh, I worked at Blockbuster Music and I'm like a little punk kid, you know, I'm like 16, 17 years wearing old. Wearing the Jinkos. Yes. <laughs> they said, they called them drapes. They're like, you, you look like you're wearing drapes. <laughs> like, they're big, man. Leave me alone. Anyway, this guy that I worked for, he was a drummer. His name was Chris. I can't remember his last name. And uh, 
And anyway, he was like kind of teasing me. I was like, oh, you got a demo? Let's hear this thing. And he's a drummer, you know? So uh, we played, it was a cassette tape and we put it in and, and he goes, who's your drummer? <laughs> I was like, that's Jason Nix, man. <laughs> What's up? You know, it sounded so good. So anyway, man, I, I, yeah, I just, you've always been awesome, man. And look, we even have this. Look at oh, this. Oh, God. My dad was the photographer. <laughs> and this was, this is cool because he took these wide shots. <laughs> what in the world? Yeah, anyway, I love this, uh, uh, the silver shirt. I remember you you took this out of your trunk or something. Like it I was got like, it at Hot Topics. Yes, it was like right <laughs> before you started. I remember you like you had to take it out. And uh, anyway, this so uh, people can't see. Well, our band was Greg Parsons, who was awesome, but Jay Daniels. <laughs> and my my hair was huge. And I always remember Jay Daniels said, "Don't put gel in it. Leave it natural." So I was like this big hair. I was like, "Okay, let's do it." Anyway, oh, man, this is our band, though. Our first band was Euthanasia. That's the worst band name in yeah. history. Yeah, and my grandmother didn't like it at all. She's like, like, you know what that means? What a terrible band name, man. <laughs> <laughs> but so, yeah, that's why I love that you're here, man. Full circle. We played at coffee shops, and it was just like, man, we practiced like crazy, dude. We practiced at my house, too. We moved it from my house. Yeah. And uh, Jason would leave his drums at my house, and I remember just, oh, man, that's what really influenced me to play is... Uh, yeah, I would come in and be like, who's been messing with my drum kit? Yeah, thanks, man. Dude, well, <laughs> everything's messed up a little. But you really like you really taught me like things to do and how to play. I never really had any official drum lessons, but I always tell people that you would give me like little things to do and it was so cool, man. You're always like a little like an older brother to me, you know? Appreciate and that. I and I was like such a passion for me. And I played bass and I was I was a crappy bass player. I didn't know what I was doing. And uh which leads me to talk about Tony Hart. Oh, God. So you guys Basically, Jason fired me and hired this guy, <laughs> Tony Hart. Rest in peace. Uh, Tony Hart, basically, what I love about Tony, uh, a, a lot of things I love about Tony. Tony replaced me on bass, and he would tell people, why isn't Scott playing? Oh, man, he just needed he need a little break or whatever. He'd always like make up little excuses, and I always thought that was cool, man, because I was embarrassed. Like, oh, well, Tony's better than me. But... Tony, man, was such a nice, genuine person and amazing bass player. How did you meet Tony? Um, well, first of all, going back to that, I think at that time, like, we were so much older than you. Yeah, you, know, you were. You were like 15 and 16. You were like, we're like 21. Five years like, older, must be. beer, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, <laughs> and a lot of it, I mean, right now we're adults. We've grown. And right. we're, we're men now. So, I mean, back then, though, with that age gap, that was huge. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And. That's that's kind of the whole story behind it, you know. And 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 I knew Tony. And, and Tony was a bass player, by the way. I was like, I remember when Jay called me. He's like, "Can you play bass?" I'm like, "I think so. I I can get a bass." You know? Yeah, man. I met Tony taking a night school class. I remember that. Yeah. And um, I was like, he had dreads. I'm like, who's this dude? He's like the only dude to come out and really talk to me. He's like, you guys took night school together. Um, I was taking a class to make up for something to graduate, and he was just doing night school. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, he had dreads, and he was like the only, it, I, I had long hair too at the time, and he's like, hey dude, what's going on? He's like the only one that really, I didn't know anybody. And he was like, hey dude, um, what's going on? And we just kind of share stories. He's like, I'm a drummer, he's a bass player. And um, he was trying to start a band with Jason Crump. I know that name, yeah. I don't know him. Um, they were hanging a lot together, and he's like, hey man, like, why don't you Was this after drums? our band? Um, this was, yes, this was, no, this was before that. Okay. Yeah, this was before that. I was probably about 19 or so when I met Tony. Mm -hmm. And um, I go to this garage, dude, and like, they're playing, like, they made this metal version of Friday the 13th. <laughs> right. And I'm like, hey, man, listen to this. I'm like, okay, um, this is weird. Yeah. I'm yeah. <laughs> like, okay, I'll play. You know, I wish then, it was still a copy of that dude. I'd love to hear that. And then like him and him and Crump was like they were doing a band and it was very toolish sounding, which I love tool, you know, and he and he's I mean, he plays just like that style and a lot yeah. of the promise kind of, you know, really busy, slappy style. And I immediately like could play rhythms with him because he was so good. And I'm like, man, mm -hmm. I mean, we would just jam these cool rhythms. And then I guess we had like a little falling apart or something went on. And then um, that's when I called him to 
come in to um, Rendisvis. Yeah, no, Rendisvis. it was Rendisvis. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Rendisvis, so the quick story rendezvous. about that. Yeah, Rendezvous. Our singer, Jonathan Jackson, was looking up names and he saw Rendezvous, but he thought it spelled Rendisvis. <laughs> so he said, we got a brand new name. And his mom or somebody's like, you idiot, that's Rendezvous. <laughs> and the best thing is my dad would like come out and film us play. I still have a video of us playing. And uh, our old singer, Jonathan, he would do like a poetry reading before we started. Do you remember that? I have it. And he'd be like... The dark clouds open. The sky. I don't know what he said. Yeah. <laughs> Some random stuff. And then you'd hear that. It was big deep. Feedback. Yeah. One, two, three. <laughs> Here we go. God. <laughs> but we played, man. We played like Marietta. We played a couple of places that were really big. Penny University did. Uh, but anyway, man, it, it was awesome. Besides the past, you've done a lot of work. So um, you've been in a few bands. Can you talk about bands? Uh, weren't you in a touring band before you did? some tribute stuff i think uh, we went in and we did down to none that was with jonathan oh, yeah, and jonathan. Roman, kelly haynes yeah. and um shane and mickey lee um and then we had a lot of like cover bands that we played around you know around the area and georgia and um down to none was I, awesome i found the down demo. to none man was like really really good like I, I i really enjoyed that band and um we did some really good stuff man and played some really good venues that's how and you then, met mickey too man i remember introducing mickey to you man. and yeah it's i got a phone call from some people in atlanta called eden and they yes, were like um they were like hey man we need a drummer and um I decided to leave, you know, because you're playing a small time band. You're playing some good shows. Mm -hmm. You got a demo, you know, all the guys are cool, but you have people that don't want to show up to practice, you know, and I get a phone call. I was like, these guys are real, you know what I mean? So I'm going to go to Atlanta. And, and we did some things. We played some good shows, and then we got on the verge of a deal. It fell through, and it just kind of broke me, you know what I mean? Because it was like, man, I've been working, you know, we've yeah. got this thing, and then it fell apart, and I probably stopped playing for two or three years. Really? How long were you playing with Eden for? Is that they were around for several years? Yeah, yeah, but I was I came in at the time when they were getting the deal, mm -hmm. so a good year, and then they kind of had a fall on. Did you do any studio work with them? Um, we did not. No, they had their album cut before I joined the band. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, that's kind of stinks, man. I mean, we have a lot of stuff recorded because we record our rehearsals, so we could go back and critique it or whatever and change this because. There's nothing like listening to yourself playing in practice. It's like that feel doesn't sound right. So mm -hmm. we change this. So can you find that, man? Is that on YouTube or anything? I have a thing. I have yeah. I have it at home. Like I've downloaded it in a file. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'd love to hear that. That's really cool. So after Eden, you you took a few years off. What'd you do? Like just work? <sighs> do anything, man. I worked. I got into like training in karate. So that mm -hmm. was kind of my outlet versus I playing didn't know music. That. Um, mm. And then you know come across mickey you know we go way back man and then that's when mickey got together with me and um tony and dj garris um and we did liquid fuss oh i remember, yeah, I remember I still remember have a that. flyer yeah yeah dude. we did that for a while and yes i have a flyer from that yeah it's, it's just yeah that, that's awesome how long did liquid fuzz last i've ever seen we you guys at several Mellow runs or... man several years oh really yeah i mean and then recently, I mean, we kind of redid it several years back, and you know, Alex Martinez, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, he started totally. playing bass with us. Grew up with him. So. so, and you, you played with Alex and those guys in Gravity Zero, right? Or I, I don't know, some kind of you, you jammed with them some in some band. I don't think we ever had a name. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember what it was. If we did, I'm sure we did. Well, how did you start? Well, I love is this tribute band, which is massive, by the way. This. What what was your first tribute band? Was it uh, probably the Alice in Change thing um, with Sean McDougal, um, and then I did that for a while. I did a lot of stuff with Tom Blair. Um, Tom Blair's awesome. Yeah, we were in I know some him. bands together, and um, and then I, I came across a Pearl Jam tribute band from um, from out of Charlotte, mm -hmm. and I reached out to a guy named Darren Hunter. I was like, dude, this is my thing. Like, I play just like this guy. He's like my favorite drummer. It's like, if you ever need a guy call me so like six months later he gave me a call and he's like hey man like i'm just not really gonna audition you like i've watched you play you're gonna be our guy oh like, wow so i went out and we did a rehearsal and started playing man like oh that's so cool dude 
Where did they live? Or they? You were still in Georgia, right? I did. I commuted. Oh, you know, did? but I mean, we're all professionals, so we would do our homework and practice at home. Mm -hmm. And like, if if we had a gap where we didn't have a, a show for like a month or two, we would have a good long rehearsal. But for the most part, you know, we stayed somewhat busy, man. I mean, played some huge venues. Yeah, I saw. Yeah, you posted like all these. So many people there. I was like, this is insane. And trip bands are, are, are big. They're still are. I mean, a lot of musicians kind of look down upon them because you're kind of ripping somebody off. But when, you're, when you need to work as a musician and you want to play, I mean, for me, that's the greatest thing. And outside of playing with Pearl Jam or Alice in Chains, that's the greatest thing for me. Yeah. You know, because I'm playing this music that I love, you know, and then mm -hmm. I actually play like, you know, and I get to play these venues in front of all these people and they really appreciate it. So, best of both worlds. Yeah. That's awesome, dude. And so, are you still playing with the Ten? Is that what the band? What's the band called? It's Jeremy's Ten. Jeremy's Ten. Um, we kind of all kind of took a hiatus because of all the stuff going on. And um, Darren asked me to. We're doing a show the twenty seventh. Nice. In Greenville. We're It'll doing be the over. first one. Since, um, uh, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it's going to be like a live feed on YouTube, social media. Oh, um, that's cool. Decent venue. So. Yeah, yeah, but you're looking forward to it, man. How, how many songs do you guys play live? Do you? Have, it depends. I, if we piggyback other tribute bands like uh, Nevermind or like Angry Chair or something like that, yeah. I mean, we've played up to an hour and 45 minutes. If it's like just us and another band, mm -hmm. if we're headlining, we generally play an hour and a half. If the minimum, it's around an hour. That's awesome, dude. And uh, I also want to go, kind of go back with, with Tony Hart. And uh, we played that show. After Tony passed, we played that show together. Remember, we all kind of got together at the, yeah. uh, what was that at? I can't remember. I got a picture of it, man. But that that meant a lot, though. Losing Tony was was insane. Tony, the first person that's ever passed that really affected me that I really knew was Tony. Mm -hmm. Like, like I was pretty down about it for a while. Like even now, I get emotional and I think about it almost every day because he always built me up. As yeah. A player. He he always was very complimentary. You know, it's like, dude, you're the best. Do this, do that, practice. You know, and a lot of people don't do that. But Tony always did, and you know. I remember when um, when we were playing, we played like this show for his family to raise money after he passed. And I remember his like daughters came up on stage, and you were there, and you were like, "Your daddy meant this much to me, and everything." And I was like, "I'll never forget that, man." I don't know if you remember that, but like his kids were there, and you were talking to him, and it's just such a you know we have you have kids, I have I mean you have one kid, I have two kids. It's just to to just to to not see your kids to. to pass away I mean that's so you're rough on your family and just yeah. just seeing that like you talking to those kids and kind of lifting their spirits I mean like it was amazing like we never played together for, like the last couple of years of you know he was alive but we talked every other day literally mm. and it's kind of funny because we're all nerds you know like I, you, you mean when the PlayStation 4 came out yeah, yeah. I bought one to sell it <laughs> you know, because they were so like rare, and I was like, man, I'm gonna buy one and sell this thing for 800 bucks. So I put it on the sale. <laughs> Jeez, 800 like, bucks. <laughs> yeah, dude, they were like crazy. So like, and it's funny, I haven't seen Tony in like five years or more yeah. at this point, and he's like, hey, dude, it's Tony. You know how Tony is? He's like all yeah. like, you know. And um, hey, man, I want to buy it. He's like, how you doing? Like, let's hang, blah blah blah. He's yeah. like, okay. So I sold it to him what I I didn't, you know, I sold it to him what I paid for it, and literally like. We got on this stupid game called Destiny. We would play that damn game like every other <laughs> night together and talk. And we wouldn't even like playing the game because we liked it. We were just talking music, you know, oh, like in chat. Cool. You know, we would talk about stuff. We'd talk about life. Yeah. You know, what we're going through. You know, it was more, it wasn't about the game. It was just about hanging out. Yeah, you know, man. Without having to go out, you know. So we'd sit there and play for hours just talking. Oh, yeah. That's, you know? that's awesome, man. Well, cool, man. So, what do you got? What are you doing next? You got Jeremy's ten. That's pretty much it, man. Yeah. Right now, it's like I think with everything that's going on. Oh, you know, yeah. You guys gonna do the face? Have, you guys gonna do a live thing, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, the twenty seventh. So that's yeah. all gonna be. Nobody's gonna be there, but it's full production. Everything. Yeah. That's so cool. It's gonna be weird having this big room, you know, and there's like nobody <laughs> there. But at the same time, you know, it'll be fun to kind of get back to some form of reality yeah you know? i can't wait to see it man I, I think it's weird like when all these like like wrestling and everything is just empty arenas and people are going yeah. at it so yeah i'd love to see that man uh, that would be really cool but i appreciate you being on the show thank you this for means the me, world man. it yeah. means like the world to me thank you i, I play music I, I play music for people for people come here i don't know and i always tell them like jason was literally the influence for me 
So you're all, you're like a big brother to me. And so it's full circle to have you on the show, brother. Thank you so much. So thank dude. you, man. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it, man. Yeah. <laughs>